Let's take a look at any other settlements. This one's not particularly happy, probably because they've been under siege for quite some time. Once again, we have plenty of food. Why don't we go ahead and upgrade to the royal court here? Cumberland, we've already handled, already handled that. Uh, let's go up to this one where public order again is not particularly great here. Why don't we dismantle this building and we'll add a building back that can help our public order while upgrading to the market. So there we go. Handled our buildings. At least with all the money that we have for now. We're still making healthy income. And once we repair our market buildings, that should jump quite a bit. By the way, you all can hear the music. The music in this game is really quite beautiful. <laughs> it's got a nice soundtrack. Well, we're being blackmailed. We can either uh, take a hit to our influence or we can pay this guy off. We'll pay him off. This is one of our family members who's being blackmailed. Our foes shall fall. We have a couple of characters who have leveled up. One is our governor. Right now his loyalty is still very strong, so let's continue to just build up this with the scribe. Let's check the next one, which is another governor. He hasn't leveled up at all yet. His loyalty is a little bit questionable at only level 3 here. Let's give him this priest to help keep him in line. We have one province with low public order, which is Cumberland here. And we're working on it. We've made some building upgrades that will hopefully help. We can even add a new building here. Let's see what's available. We have a market fair. None of these will actually improve public order. Or actually this one will. A tavern. Give the people ale. There we go. <laughs> the people of Cumberland want their ale. Alright, so, these folks have left, we can now focus on these rebels over here. Let's go ahead and end, uh, well, let me show you this here. I've got this Jarl's Huskarls. Wow, that's a mouthful. And we can retrain them into Danelaw Huskarls because we've done research. I haven't showed you any of the research yet. Let's go show you the technology tree. So far I've done a ton of research on melee units because that's where I've wanted my focus to be. That's how I want my faction to be driven. I have a lot of good axe units and I want those axe units to absolutely shred my enemies. So you can see that I've gone through this where it unlocks first the shield biter units that you can recruit. 15 melee skill for sword and axe units, that's a lot. And then it upgrades Jarls, Huskarls, Danelaw Axemen. As you keep going, you keep unlocking the higher tier units. It's kind of like Attila, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 units. So now I'm working on spearmen, so I'm going to be unlocking new spearmen here in one turn, and we can upgrade those as well. There's stuff down here that helps research rates, or uh, sorry, max number of sword and axe infantry in the pool so you can increase. Speaking of which, let's take a look at that recruiting pool so you all know how it, know how it works. This is the recruiting pool. It tells you how many of these units are available to be recruited right now. So like right now, for instance, there's three of three sword herdmen who are ready to be recruited. And then same thing with our spearmen, Northumbrian thanes. You can see all the units here. If you can't recruit a unit, it tells you why. We don't have siege advancements, so we can't recruit catapults. Nor do we have the right technology, missile specialists, to unlock armored archers. You can recruit as long as you're in a settlement or in the fortified stance. Then you recruit the units, and they come to you not entirely ready to fight. Let's show you what that means. I don't have any shield biters, so let's recruit these guys. They're kind of a mid between the um, the Great Axemen are all charge. These guys are kind of a mixed unit with a little bit of defense, really good charge, but still really solid damage and melee attack. So they're, they're kind of an in-between unit that still has a shield. So let's recruit them. You can see they come in down here. They only have 18 men. And then uh, our cavalry may need an upgrade here too, so let's get some uh, Thane horsemen. We're going to click the check mark here to recruit. You can see that these units come in. They're not at full strength. So the days of the AI, or you for that matter, recruiting an army all in one turn very quickly and being ready to just go forth, it doesn't happen that way. You have to recruit the unit and then build it up. Let's upgrade our Huskarls while we're here too. So now, again, it shows you the unit tier here. Ah, it says unit tier 1. Tier 1. Tier 3. See so our Great Axemen are tier 3 because we've upgraded them a couple of times. So, 
Uh, you can also have special buildings, which I have here in the north. Let's take a look at it. Um, I thought it was here. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's here. I have this uh, great forge here, so you can get armor level 3 and weapons 3, which is extra 15% to, to both. So, pretty cool building to build as well, so some of my units have been upgraded, and that's reflected whenever you look here. You can see the gold weapon upgrades, some of them have silver weapon upgrades. So, good stuff indeed. Let's go ahead and end another turn. So what are the, some of the things that I like about the campaign? What are a few things that I would like to see better? So, I'll give you a couple of thoughts on what I've seen so far. The campaign's fun in the sense that you do have a connection to your faction leader and his family. You're trying to keep them alive. Um, as you level them up, they become a lot more powerful. You can, you can level them up to be better at replenishing. You can make their bodyguard unit insanely strong. You can do a whole bunch of things um, to these different units. So it's pretty fun the way that they level up. I like that... Um, there's factions. You start off, for instance, being able to trade with a lot of factions around you. There's kind of that feeling of the English versus the Danes here. Um, and, you know, all that kind of plays in as well. The rebellion mechanics are cool. If you have a governor that you don't pay attention to their loyalty, they'll rebel and they'll take the province with them and have an army and you have to fight them down. So, nice rebellion mechanics. Um, the food system is straightforward. It makes sense. It's relatively easy to use. And uh, the war fervor is also not bad. Um, you know, whenever the campaign first started, my people really wanted to be at war. So it drove this very aggressive uh, early phase of the game where I expanded massively. And now that I've expanded, the people are like, all right, you know, we've seen enough of our sons die at war. We're good for a little while. <laughs> then you have this mechanic here, too. English hate me. My own army likes me. Got to balance it out one way or the other. With the English hating me, I basically get big diplomatic penalties with um, several factions, which could drive further war. It makes things interesting. My warriors are ready. Some of the things that I haven't been as fond of. I um, guess I'll just throw a few things out here so that it's not just all lopsided saying that everything's good. Um, the AI seems a little bit similar. Um, again, this is a pre-production build, though. You'll notice right down here in the corner it's actually recording that. So I don't know exactly what they're going to do or what they will finish. I would certainly like to see a few improvements to the AI. It's been a little passive on the battlefield. On the campaign map, the AI is a little more aggressive, and it's fun. However, sometimes it does what typical Total War AI will do, and it'll go around you with uh, one army, one unit, and all of these minor settlements have no way to be defended. They have no garrison. So any small AI army that gets around you can go and take these, and it can throw your entire campaign into jeopardy. Because if you lose your food supply, your men will start to rebel and perish. You won't have the right supply lines, which are all cool features. But when the AI does that and goes around you, it can just be ex extremely frustrating. So, maybe not my favorite thing. Some of you may not mind it, but it's just one thing I noticed. So again, passive battlefield AI, it needs a little bit of improving. And then the campaign AI really gears towards taking away your small settlements from you. Um, and they basically avoid any open conflict, just like Warhammer or any other game. Uh, unless they think they're going to win, which can sometimes be a little frustrating. Because I don't know about you all, but I come to a Total War game to fight, and I want some big fights. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so in any case, there's a couple of my thoughts. A lot of good stuff here. If you're looking for a Total War game to step back out of fantasy, um, let's say that maybe you've played Warhammer and you're done with it, and you want to go back into a, a Total War that's historically based, um, or let's say that you weren't into Warhammer, and you're looking for the next historical base game. Well, this is going to be it. Um, it's fun. It's on a smaller scale, kind of like Follow the Samurai or Shogun 2. Um, the units, same same thing there. Um, it's fun. It definitely is fun. The map has a ton of different provinces, and you've got your seasons and all these other features that I think people are really going to like. There's a little more to the city building on this game than there is in Warhammer, so for those of you who missed that mechanic, that's there. Um, the family tree and all those things that a lot of people like traditionally from historical Total War. All those things are there. So, I think it's good. I um, think it's something to be excited about. This is definitely one I'm going to be watching and covering as it comes out. And we'll cover it in more detail as the detail becomes available. That's all the time I have to show you things now. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. I'll answer what I can. I'm not able to tell you everything that I know about the game yet. Some of it's still under embargo. But you've gotten to see... Um, an early look at uh, North Umbra here, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. 
I'll see you soon with some more Thrones of Britannia.